going to deal with different types of charcoal and a type of art called foreshortening. Foreshortening is a type of extreme perspective. Some of you have seen it in comic book things, like with a hand coming way forward. Um, here's one with the face coming way forward and the body further back. There's a pirate with a sword coming way forward. There's a kid on a swing with the feet coming way forward. So what it is, it seems weird at first if you've never tried it before, but you're exaggerating the position of a person, making parts of it a lot bigger than they normally are to make it come forward. Okay, that's the uh. end result of the project. The first thing you should do though before you even begin is I would like to, for you to get to know the different types of charcoal and experiment some with them with any little sketch that you want. There is vine charcoal, which is extremely thin and flimsy and breakable, but it's very good for initial sketching. It rubs off very easily and becomes light. Now some people will say, oh, you can't erase charcoal. Yes, you can. Use one of the rubber erasers and it erases the white plastic rubber erasers. It will not erase well with a regular pencil eraser. Kneaded erasers, however, are better for blending and smoothing and also to get into tiny, tiny little places to make a highlight. You can pull some of it out like a piece of gum and get it into a real tiny spot and erase a little area. Right? Now yes, charcoal is messy. Some people prefer to either lay a paper towel down while they're drawing so they don't get it under their arm or even hold a piece of charcoal with a paper towel. And that's vine charcoal. This is compressed charcoal. Compressed charcoal is thicker and as the um, title lends itself to. It, it, it's compressed, it's tighter together, and it's much darker. This is like the messiest of the stuff, all right? And you can blend it, of course, with your fingers, with the tissue. We have those stomps again with the pointy edges, that roll paper stuff. You can also blend with those. I should have gotten some of those out, but I'll get those out when you start working. Okay, so example with the kneaded eraser, if you want to get to a little spot and erase it or get it lighter. See, the kneaded eraser gets a little spot very nicely. If you really want a big area, the white eraser is good for that. And it's very, very clean, the light rubber eraser. Okay, the last form of charcoal I'm going to discuss with you that you can play with a little bit before you start the final drawing is a charcoal pencil. Okay, notice my hands are really black from the other stuff. Yeah, that'll happen. It does wash off. And if you're really worried, I have that green painter soap over there that gets everything off. Okay. Charcoal pencil. You get finer lines. Just like with drawing smaller areas, it's great for detailing, as you can see here. Okay, so those are some of the effects of charcoal. And your final piece, you're going to have value range, and it's going to be on big paper. But as I said before, I want you to play with the different types of charcoal on a smaller piece of paper, kind of get to know them, so to speak, what they can do and, and what kind of techniques you can make with them. This is obviously as harsher, it's not as soft. You can blend it to be a little softer. But the softest of all is the vine charcoal. Okay? The compressed is like medium. And the pencils are very fine. They're good for small places. So let's move on to the foreshortening aspect. Okay, there are some tricks to make something look like it's foreshortened, and it takes a while for people to like get used to it. They say it looks wrong, it looks bad, but then you guys watch animated films and cartoons and see photographs all the time of foreshortening, and you don't think it looks bad or weird. So it's just something to get used to and practice with. You can start out your sketch with a light pencil. You don't have to start out with a charcoal, especially because that's new and you want to get to know the charcoal. So let's say I want to do something like this anime girl here. I'm going to draw, gesture draw, a circle really big for the hand. I'm going to gesture draw a small circle for the head. And yes, it looks outrageous that the hand would be that big, much bigger than the head, but that's the effect you want. I'm going to gesture draw um, a smaller arm. I'm going to, you know, gesture draw means just loosely mapping out where stuff goes. Okay, that's all we're doing here. Get the position of her body, get the position of this person. All right, and we start going for detail. Foreshortening is a strange term, but what it means is the thing in the foreground is huge, the thing in the back is shortened, thus foreshortening. Okay, it makes it look like things going back in perspective. Um, so, here I have this arm, 
I'm going to actually draw, again, the gesture drawing form for the hand and then start to add detail. Think of the hand as pieces of ovals. Don't let it freak you out that it's a hand and you think you can't draw it. See things in terms of shapes and ovals, it'll be better for you. A lot of times people have trouble with a the hand, they don't realize it's almost like cheap parts. You have your fist and your fingers come out from that. A lot of people want some fingers way down here. You almost have like a cup-like form here with your hand at the base. Okay, so here we go. Again, this is really roughed out. I'm adding details. But already, you can see the foreshortening start to happen because that hand is so much bigger than the rest of the body. And this leg is even further back, so it's even smaller than the leg in front. All right, the same thing would happen with that hand. It's shorter and smaller. Okay, let's try something else. Let's try this uh, child with the feet. What I would do first is map out where you want things. The head small, the feet big, just like a gesture drawing again. And then concentrate more on shapes. I'm going to put them in the swing. Again, you don't have to do an exact copy of any photograph. In fact, I wish you wouldn't. I'm just trying to teach you about the foreshortening part right now. Okay, feet are a little bit like peanuts here. Get a bit fatter there and smaller as they go in. You just see a little bit of the leg, and it's going into that little seat for the swing. Okay, you see more of the leg over here. So it's okay to gesture draw right over what you just did. Okay, and then map in the shapes like this. All right, the hands are coming over like this, etc. Now, once you get your thing worked out and get your foreshortening good, that's when you're going to start worrying or not worrying, dealing with the value range of the lights and darks with the three different types of charcoal. Your finished piece should have a very nice composition, um, balanced and filled in. Um, here's one from last year that a girl named Elin did. Let me zoom in on it for you. She was a foreign exchange student from Sweden, and uh, she chose to do the foreshortening with the head coming at us and the feet coming back as if we were standing above the person. Notice our value range in the charcoal, the light, medium, and dark tones, and all the detailing. Okay, so that's it for your lesson. Remember, you're going to play with the charcoal first on a smaller piece of paper. Get to know the three different kinds, the vine charcoal, the compressed charcoal, and the charcoal pencil. And then you're going to sketch and practice foreshortening before you start your final piece. That's it. Thanks.